So, everything today that I've heard has just been, uh, has gone right along with what the Lord has given me, so that confirmation is always wonderful. Amen. Uh, the title tonight, and I know everybody likes to have a title because everyone who's taking notes likes to have a title. So tonight it is Life-Changing Power. So who would like to partake of a little life-changing power tonight? Life-changing power. Not just a little bit of power, but life-changing power. Big power. Big, big power. If you'd open your Bibles to Ephesians 1 tonight... We're going to start talking about some life-changing power. Ephesians 1, verse 18. I'm going to give you just a second to get there. Ephesians 1, verse 18. And I told you that everything that uh, I've heard today in, in services and lessons this morning has all been confirmation. You're going to be saying, wow, I think maybe I heard something like this earlier on. Because it all goes together today, for some reason and some way. That's the way the Lord works. Isn't He great? Amen. Yeah. Okay, Ephesians 1, 18. Um, and I'm going to read 19 also, but we'll start with 18. And it says, and this is Paul talking to the Ephesian church, and he says, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can... I'm going to stop right there for a second. Pray that your hearts will be flooded with light. Kind of goes along with what Pastor Steve was talking about this morning, about how we have to have the light so we can see the way. And Pastor Steve this morning was talking about a candle works pretty good, a flashlight might even be a little bit better. But Paul is talking tonight about, about our hearts. He wants our hearts to be flooded with light. You've heard of floodlights before. You know how those floodlights, they put out a lot of light. Yes. A lot of light. In fact, they're, if you try to look into them, you'll kind of you get a little blinded, Blind. won't you? Yes. It's a lot brighter than the, than the uh, camera light that you was looking at today that you went, whoa, this yes. is kind of bright. Right. So Paul is asking that our hearts will be flooded with light so that we can understand so that we can be enlightened, so we can acknowledge, so that we can we can uh, comprehend um, the confident hope that God has given to those that He has called. I hope everybody has been enlightened. They they've had the floodlight turned on in their hearts, and that they can understand the confident hope. That God has given to all of us. Does everybody have confident hope tonight? Yes. Confident hope. Confident hope tells me, oh, I am so sure. I am so sure. And hope is it's all going to turn out good. It's positive. It's great. It's fabulous. It's glory. Now, isn't it? Yes. Confident hope is wonderful. It's so much different than the opposite, which is gloom and doom and, oh, we're doomed, we'll never make it. <laughs> but we should all have confident hope here tonight. And by looking at everybody, I'm pretty sure that everyone's got great confident hope here tonight. Uh, the confident don't hope that He has given to those who He has called. He has given to what? who? You and me, the ones that He's called. God is coming to our hearts and He has called us. He has called us to come and not only be His friend, but to be His servant also. Wonderful, wonderful news here. Amen. <clears throat> who are His rich and glorious inheritance. And in 19, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us. The incredible greatness of God's power for us. What's that telling? You know what that's telling me? That's telling me that God has power for us. He, he has given us power. He has power available to each and every one of us. That's right, amen. Do you have to be a preacher? No. Do you have to be a deacon? No. Do you have to be a, an apostle? No. 
No, you know what you have to be? You have to be a believer. Amen. You have to be a believer. That's all we have to be. We have to believe God's Word. And He has, how is it written? Incredible greatness of power Amen. available to all of us. That is good news, isn't it? Yeah. And this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Now, you know, in our little uh, uh, human pea brains, you know, that takes a lot of power, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, for God, I'm sure it was nothing because all things are possible with Him. But you know what? If we, if we have availability to God's power... What does that tell you? All things should be possible for us too. All things should be possible. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Power. Wonderful thing. So I want to tell you a couple of things that Christianity is not. It isn't how to be financially successful. It isn't how to achieve your worldly goals. That's right. It isn't, uh, or it's not about having your best life now. That's right. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> Christianity isn't about philosophy, and it's not about talk. Right. Christianity is about power. Amen. It's about power, people. Yeah. Power to obey God. Power, power to good. change. Amen. I want to stop with the power to obey God. First, I want to stop right there and talk about that for a minute. <coughs> you know, if God didn't have any power, first of all, we wouldn't even want to follow Him. Right. But many times we want to follow God, but we've got this old fleshy flesh, as Sister Sue likes to say, and our flesh doesn't want to follow God, even though our hearts do. And it makes it almost impossible, it seems like, to be able to follow God and to obey God and to do what God says. But through the power of God, He makes it possible. Amen. Amen. All things are possible. You know, it's a very hard thing. I remember my uh, um, little exchange from the world into Christianity. Woo! That was a rough turnover, people. And I, I know, I know there was a lot of people looking at me just shaking their heads. Don't know if he's going to make it. Don't know if he's going to make it. And, and, and a lot of the world looking at me going, there ain't no way. Right, right. There ain't no way. He's not going to change like that. But through the power of God, I'm giving a sermon tonight. Right. How about that? Oh, God's power is so mighty and powerful and great and fascinating that we can do all things. See, it's also about power to change. And we just talked about that just a little bit. You know, we don't have to be the same old person and be and, and do the same old things. Because Romans 12, 1 tells us not to conform to the, to the world, but to transform by the renewing of our minds. That is the power of God, people. That is the power of God. If you want the power of God, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to, I'm going to probably say this a few times, start reading your Bible. Amen. Or read your Bible more. <laughs> Every bit of more of God's Word that you can get into you, if you have to listen to it on CD, if you have to watch a DVD, if you have to, whatever you have to do, get more of God's Word in you. And all things will be possible. You know, all the great, well, First of all, the apostles back in Jesus' time, but even before that, all the great prophets. You know what? They knew God's Word. That's where they drew their power from. You know, everyone say, well, you know, Elijah, you know, well, he was just a special person, you know, and God chose it. 
God has chosen every one of us. That's, right. That's yeah. what we decide to do with the power and, and how much power we decide to attain. It's up to us. Right. It's up to each one personally how much power you're going to be able to right. obtain. That's right. But you know, a lot of people, they when they think power, they think of lording it over people and 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 bringing in the money and, and stuff like that. But that's not the kind of power that we're talking about tonight. We're talking about life-changing power, power for the good, power for the better, power that's good for your soul. Wow. That speaker just come on. Oh. Okay. We're kind of loud tonight. <laughs> God gave us power. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> How about power to love those that are messed up? Does that take power? That definitely takes power to love people that are messed up. Amen. Are you going to unplug him, Pastor? Yes, I am. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, I don't know if good. the microphone is working now, is it? Yeah, it should be, shouldn't it? No, it I don't think it is. No, it ain't. No. Well, we can hear you, bro, Scott. You can hear me? <laughs> yeah, we want it to record. Okay. Keep going, keep going, keep going. How about power to love people that are messed up? You know, a lot of times in our lives, we run into people that really have a lot of problems. You know, they have drug problems, they have sexual problems, they have uh, head trips from their parents, they have all this stuff going on, plus their addictions, and they're, uh, maybe they're even a thief, or, uh, you know, and they have so many problems. Yes. And we kind of don't want to mess with them because they're a lot of work. Isn't that right? Amen. But you know what? God can give us the power to work with these people, to help these people, and then when they have enough belief in their hearts, God will give them the power to transform themselves. Power, power upon power. How about power to get back up after being pummeled wave after wave of affliction? Have you ever had that in your life? We all have, haven't we? But when we're in the world, it's like, I don't think I'll ever recover. Right. We always thought that we were doomed and we were dead and we will never recover from the financial loss we went through or the death in our family that we went through or the uh, whatever it is. There's so many things that we go through in this, in this life. But when we have the power of God... We can get back up right. each and Amen. every time, Amen. can't we? Amen. No matter what it is, no matter what the devil throws at us, we can continue to get back up and praise God and to go on with His Word. How about power to wield the sword of the Spirit and the shield of faith to extinguish the devil's fiery darts? You know what? Because he's always so, I don't know about you, but he's always throwing them darts at me. But you know, you know how to defeat the devil? By the power of God's Word. Amen. Jesus taught us that when He was being tempted out in the wilderness. Right. Now, didn't He? Yep. Everything that the devil threw at Him, Jesus said, The Word says, Thou shalt not live by bread alone, but live by every word of God. That's right. And so that is very good advice. Amen. You know, you can, you can fend off the devil with God's word each and every time. Amen. Why? Because the devil knows that God rules. That's right. Everyone thinks that the devil's got so much power, but he doesn't have nearly the power that what God does. That's no, right. does he? And God makes his power available to each and, each and every one of us. And do you know why that is? It's because the gospel itself is the very power of God. Amen. It is the message of the cross that is the very power of God. Where do we find the message of the cross? Where do we find the gospel? 
We find it right here in, God, in the rest of God's <laughs> Word, right here. That is the power that is available to us. And I said it earlier, and I'm going to say it again. Read your Bible. Study your Bible. Make sure you understand your Bible. Let yourself be enlightened. Pray each time that you get into the Bible that God enlightens you and fills your heart with all the goodness that's in the Bible. Amen. There is so much to learn and it's layered upon layer upon layer. Amen. I don't know how many times I read a verse and read a verse and think I know everything about that verse and a couple years maybe later or another month later or whenever I come back to that verse and I say, wow, it also means this. Wow. Because God's Word is full of power. Yes, it is. I'm going to read uh, 1 Corinthians 1, verses 17 and 18. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you just a second to find it while I get a drink of water. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 17 and 18. He came alive, it said it wanted to come alive. That's power. <laughs> That's power. His name might have been Lazarus. <laughs> First Corinthians 1, verses 17 and 18. And this is Paul, formerly Saul, who is uh, speaking to the Corinthian church, and he says, For Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the good news. In other words, to preach the gospel. To preach about Jesus and the cross. To preach about the new covenant. To preach about God's new way. Amen. And not with clever speech, he said. He says, I don't use high-minded words. I don't use stuff that people aren't going to understand. I'm not using things to try to impress people. I am using words just like we do in this church. Plain, simple words, except for sometimes cinnamon, 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 or a couple other words. But and not with clever speech, for fear that the cross of Christ would lose. It's power. Now, I can't imagine the cross of Christ losing its power unless we make it an intentional move to do that. And you know what? There's a lot of preachers out there that wants to deceive people because they want to get into your pocketbook. They want to get into your pockets. They want to get your uh, 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 money clip. That's what they want. They want your purse. They want your money clips. And they want all that green stuff that's inside of there. And they'll get it any way they can. And they'll, they'll use uh, all kinds of tactics to get it. And some of it, some of it is using high-minded reasoning that really makes no sense to anybody. And it has nothing to do with God. In fact, it's opposite of what God is telling us to do. That's right. So we need to be very careful of that. We don't want... Okay, and then, uh, and then uh, in verse 18, the message of the cross, in other words, the gospel, is foolish to those that are headed for destruction. Amen. You know what? The cross is a dividing place. It's for the believers on one side and the unbelievers on the other side. Right. And that was even proved at Calvary when Jesus was on the cross. Right. You had a prisoner on this cross who, who was going to meet Jesus in heaven right. and another one over here who was a disbeliever who was already perishing. Yep. <laughs> you wouldn't give up. But we who are being saved know that it is the very power of God. Amen. That's what it says right here. But we who are being saved know that it is the very power of God. See, it's the gospel. It's God's <laughs> Word that has the power. Amen. And it's attainable by each and every one of us. What do we need to do? We need to get the Word into us. We need to start applying the Word to our life. 
we start we need to start using the word against the enemy. Amen. We need to start standing up yeah. for God. We need to start standing up and saying, that's not what God's Amen. Word says. Amen. Not only to the crooked preachers, but also to the crooked politicians Amen. out there. That's, right. that's not what God says how to live. That's right. And it's funny, it doesn't say that it's the very wisdom of God, and it doesn't say it is the very gift of God, it says it's the very power of God. Power, power, power. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Yes, I really didn't mean to get up here and sing, y'all, but it just came out. It's like a fire that burns inside. When the Lord says do it, it's like a fire that burns inside, and I have to do it. Amen. Amen. Oh, to be obedient. Such a wonderful thing when you're obedient to the Lord. Amen. Oh, it says the very power of God. 1 Corinthians 4.20. 1 Corinthians 4.20. If you want to turn around, I'm going to give you just a second while I get another drink. Yes, if you would, please. Let him finish that one off. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says, For the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk, it is living by God's power. See, we don't just get up here and talk about a fantasy. We don't just get up here and talk. We don't, we, we don't serve an a, a, a imagined God. We serve an all-powerful God. Amen. See, and He does have a kingdom. And His kingdom is alive and it's held alive by His great yes, and mighty yes. power. Yes. Oh... 2 Corinthians 10, starting in verse 3. Thank you, Brother Stephen. You're 2 Corinthians 10, <clears throat> verses 3 and 4. For though we live in the world, I think you're supposed to read, for though we live in this world, We do not wage war as the world does. You know, when the world wages war, they use a, the they used to always use uh, arrows and axes and bows and I don't know. They had some kind of clubs and swords and everything. And and uh, as little kids, we use just words or we use our fists or 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 whatever. And now it's gotten all the way up to you know grenades and then. Machine guns and atomic bombs, even. Right. <laughs> hmm. Boy. But you know what? God's even more powerful than any of that stuff. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to defeat. Divine power. That's godly power, people. That's power from out of this world to demolish, wipe out, take care of, never have to worry about again, strongholds. Amen. I love the way that Sister Sue explained the stronghold the other day about people who have strongholds, and I probably won't be able to say it word for word the way that she said it, but I'm going to try to explain what she said. You know what a stronghold is? Is we have a spirit within us that that doesn't want to go away. Yeah. That's right. He is held up in there. He's got himself a fort built inside of you, right. and he does not want to come out. That's right. And you know, a lot of times the person that he's stronghold up in doesn't want that spirit to come out either, because it means that you got to change. That's 
That's oh, right. yeah, come on. Come on. That means that you got to change. Yeah. But God's out of this world power can right. demolish <laughs> that yeah, stronghold. Power. Any stronghold that you have, any stronghold that anybody has, God can demolish it. I like that word demolish. It just too. talks about wipes it out, takes care of it, Wipe don't it. have to worry about it anymore. Oh, I think we're good on that. James 5, 16b says that the earnest prayer of a righteous person yep. has great power and produces wonderful results. So see, don't you believe that prayer has great power too? Yeah. And when you pray God's Word, it's even all the more powerful, isn't it? But the funny thing is, though, is I don't feel electricity when I pray, do you? <laughs> no. In fact, I feel kind of weak. Yeah. You know, I feel kind of like a, a jar of clay. Huh? Do you feel like a jar of clay when you pray? There's a good reason for that. But God puts His power in clay pots. Look it up later. It's in 2 Corinthians 4, 7. God puts His power in clay pots. Okay? So, we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves, oh, I guess I'm reading that, but we ourselves are like, Fragile clay jars. Fragile. fragile. And we are fragile, aren't we? Yep. It's not too hard to have the life snuffed right out of us, is it? Life is pretty tender. Life is pretty fragile. Um, people, people go see the Maker every day because they were fragile. And even the strongest, most muscled up person is still fragile. Yep. Right, Not right. only are we fragile in our physical lives, we're pretty fragile in our mental lives, and we're fragile. That's right. That's right. We better not be fragile in our That's spiritual right. lives, though, That's because right. when we do go to meet the Maker, we want to be going in the right place now, don't we? Yes. Uh, are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Yes. You know, I hate it when you, when you know that God has been blessing somebody because somebody starts going the right way and God begins to bless them and all of a sudden they get all puffed up like they did it all themselves. It's a sad, sad thing because God always That's brings that right. person down. That's but if they would just give the praise and the glory to God where it belongs, they would be so much even further along. That's right. Oh. That's right. Let's give praise to what praise is due. Amen. 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 Yeah. That's right. That's God's power is available to all who believe in obedience. That's right. Amen. It really is. You can have the power to overcome. You know what? There's so many things that we need to overcome in our lives. Yeah. Fears, trials, uh, Whatever, you know. Uh, I know the pastor was kind of fearful of climbing a ladder at one point in his life. And I saw God take that away from him. And now he's still careful when he climbs a ladder. But he has lost the fear of it. Right. You know, we can all overcome things in our lives through the power of God. We also have the power to obey. I was talking about our flesh before... It, you know, it's so hard to obey God on our own, but when we have the power of God in us, it makes us able and capable to obey God and to do His bidding. That's right. He equips us. The power to renew. You know, how many times do we need to be spiritually renewed? Well, first of all, let's talk about in our transition from our our worldly lives yeah. to our to our spiritual lives. We need a big renewal there now, don't we? It wouldn't be possible without God, now would it? No. You know, people try really hard on their own to change themselves. It's almost impossible. You're right. But with the power of God, 
Anything is possible. Anything is possible. The power to change. The power to persevere. Sometimes we think I just can't keep going. But God will give us the power. He will lift us up. He will put us on firm ground. And He will give us a pat on the back and a big loving hug. And say, go on my child, you can do it. There you go. Oh, it's so good to have reassurance from a powerful loving God. Amen. Not only is He powerful and is anything possible through Him, but He loves us and He cares for us and He has our best interest at heart at all times. We'll never find anybody on earth like that. It is power of love. Now that's a lot of power right there. Yes. The power of caring. God's got power available for you. Take hold of it. Read your Bible, study your Bible, apply it to your life, and God has life-changing power Amen. available right. to you. That's right. Praise the Lord. I'm going to leave you all with that. Oh, that's good. That was great.